Abbas, ladies and gentlemen, this is what I'm able to see. And the topic that I'm so much interested in, given the knowledge that I have in advanced management accounting, is known as strategic performance measurement. Strategic performance measurement, topic number five. So under topic number five, what do they want me to teach you, my good students? Under topic number five, they want me to teach you what we call functional and divisionalized organizational structures. The concept of responsibility accounting, responsibility centers, and the segmental reporting. 5.3, they would want us to go through the divisional performance measures. The, basically, they would want us to go through uh, the ratios here. And the specific ratios that they want us to go through are, we have the profit margin, we have asset turnover ratio, return on investment, that is ROI, return on capital employed, we have residual income, RI, we have accounting rate of return, ARR, and we have economic value added. Then we have 5.4, the non-financial performance measures. And then 5.5, we have alternative performance measures, such as the balance scorecard, the performance pyramid. We have the Fitzgerald and the moon building blocks. And the moon building blocks, ladies and gentlemen, listen and listen to me very well. Advanced management accounting is a beautiful paper. And that is why we are so happy that Casnebri introduced it as a compulsory paper. You can only, ladies and gentlemen, in this case here, be a fully baked accountant if you are also good in terms of AMA. Remember, management accounting basically is all about advising the management. So in this case here, you're giving information to the management, you as a management accountant, so that the management can sit down and now make what we call informed decisions given your advice as a management accountant. So even if you are a very good financial reporter, even if you are a very good financial reporter, you are a very good tax accountant, if you do not have aspects of how you're going to speak with, you don't have good aspects of how you're going to speak with management, then really you can't be 100% what here complete. So, ladies and gentlemen, when you talk of advanced management accounting, I would want you to appreciate this from the word go, that our role will be advisory role. We shall be the ones, in this case here, who will be doing evaluations. The management will come and they will tell you strategically, we want to go this direction. We have this strategic plan. Then it will be a on you as a management accountant to sit down and quantify the various alternatives that are in that strategic plan with a view of helping this company minimize its costs and thereby maximizing on what year on returns, on returns, on returns. So what are we picking from this as I connect this with my topic? Ladies and gentlemen, a management accountant will be required here to give information to who? To managers. Information that managers now will be able to use to choose between the various alternatives that they have. Good companies will always have many ways of doing things. For example, I'm in Nairobi. If I would want to go to Meru, is there somebody who knows alternative ways of going to Meru from Nairobi? Is there anybody who knows alternative ways of going to Nairobi? I want to see whether my students travel, whether they know Meru. Meru is a beautiful country. Kabati, Kabati. Mary is a beautiful country, but county, beautiful county. Is there anybody from Nairobi here who could be knowing like, uh, if Joshua today wanted to go to Meru, which routes will he use? Somebody who knows this. So for instance, because it seems not many of us travel this Kenya, if I want to go to Meru and I'm doing a nice road trip, I can go straight away via Nanyuki route. Thank you very much, Dennis. I could go via the Nanyuki route. Dennis Mbaka, why don't you finish then there? routes. It's important for you to appreciate the number of routes, many routes. You should have many routes. So in this case here, somebody is telling me that Mualimu 
you could go through the Nanyuki route. So I go Nanyuki, I go to Timau, and then I check in Meru. And then somebody is telling me, have I seen anybody mentioning something there? Via Embu, yes. You can also go in this case here via Embu. Now, please listen. It will be upon you as a management accountant to look for information, cost implications. If you go the Nanyuki way to Meru, how much will it cost? I'm not so sure. Those old days when I used to go over there, it used to be quite nice. With about 700 Kenya shillings, I would go the Nanyuki way and reach to Meru very, very easily. But I, from Nairobi, Embu, ETC, ETC, I think it would be much expensive, I, I suppose. It may be much expensive i'm not so sure all right so if it is a thousand versus 700 you go and table that information tell the management that you guys if you want to go to meru these are the options and these are the cost implications and this is why we are recommending this particular so as a management accountant you provide information and of course with your advisory note over there but it is the final Responsibility, the final responsibility falls on who? The board of directors. Ladies and gentlemen, I know of very many specific situations where I have been involved. For instance, let's look at a general company, a company like EABL. We know that EABL has a, a main responsibility of making some product. Some product, if you took it, for example, today, I'm so sure you won't be in our today's session. You'll be a bit tipsy. Alcohol is the main product that they make. But you see, there is no way this alcohol will come to these consumers without packaging. So then it means that uh, EABL, they also have to make a decision regarding what here? Yeah, bottling, bottling. They have to make a decision regarding bottling. So remember, making of bottles is not their primary mandate. It's not their primary thing. The primary thing is alcohol. But there is no way this alcohol will be able to move from breweries headquarters all the way to, for example, Rift Valley, and then it gets to the mouths of consumers. No, no, no. We need some bottles. We need some kind of what here, somebody packaging. Now, as a gentleman, remember, again, as management accountants, we are trying to advise companies to make sure that they do not spend most of their time on secondary activities. They don't spend most of their time on secondary activities. If, for example, as a gentleman, you are a bank today, I mean, we know as bankers, we know your primary duty. Do you think in this case, it's important for you to employ like a tea girl? Making tea is not your thing here. All right, you don't even have that experience. This is a secondary thing to you. So all these secondary activities, like for example, food, like security, ETC, we recommend the companies to focus on their main jobs. So in this case here, any secondary activity, they should always consider outsourcing. Consider outsourcing. So the same case with breweries. In terms of bottling, they'll be making a decision here. They'll be making a decision here. Should we make the bottles ourselves? Or should we subcontract and they get these bottles from a company whose main job is to make settlers bottles, for example, Central Glass, Central Glass of Kenya Limited, Central Glass of Kenya Limited. So you see in their strategic plan, they would want to grow their profitability. They would want to grow their profits. So now you as a management accountant, you have picked one secondary activity. So you need to go ahead and uh, attach values to this. So approach central glass. Tell central glass, you know what? We are in the process of evaluating our bottling division. And we think come 2025, we'd want to give you the tender to supply us with all our bottle requirements. So those guys will start thinking about the millions and millions of bottles they'll sell to breweries. So then as a management accountant, I'll ask them, you guys, I mean, how much then will you charge us per bottle? Should we buy this number of bottles from you? These guys will tell us, you know what, because you're even our neighbors next here, we shall bring to your doorstep each bottle, for example, at how much? At 25, at 25, at 25. All right. 
And then I'll now take a step further. I'll go inside the organization that's inside EABL and then ask myself, what if we decide to produce ourselves? So I'll do a list of all those costs because it is also the responsibility of a management accountant to do pricing and costing. So I'll come up with a list of all the costs. So like, what do we need? For us to produce the bottle, we need raw materials. So here we need materials. For, for example, glass. So for example, these materials would cost 10. If we are going to produce these bottles ourselves, we need labor. So we need, ladies and gentlemen, here we need labor. And if it's labor that we need, then we need, for example, in this case here, Kenya shillings 12. Kenya shillings 12. Kenya shillings 12. All right. Should we decide to make these bottles ourselves, we need warehousing. We need production. So automatically after this, laborers have been able to produce, would need even a place where they produce these things from. Where do they store these things in? So we'll need what we call like rent, ETC, even if it is a, our premises, there's an opportunity cost. So we need what we call overheads. We need what we call overheads. We need what we, we, need what we call overheads. We need what we call overheads. Overhead, as you shall see, these are those common expenses. In a card for the benefit of all the bottles, in a card for the benefit of all the students, for example, like rent. When we pay rent for this kind of a studio, I mean, it, it will not be like uh, I'm charging one student rent. It's a common expense paid for the benefit of all the units. So in this case, I'll come under, for example, do what we call overhead calculation, but to absorb it. We call it absorbing it. We absorb it to each of the bottles. So for example, when I absorb, this could be like 13. So then I'll be able to add 13 plus 12 plus 10. So then this gives us what here, 25. This gives us 35 like that. So ladies and gentlemen, me as a management accountant, after I've been able to do this, I'll simply go under pen and advisory note. Tell them I've done my calculations very well. And the making option will be costing us 35. Uh, Subcontracting option will be costing us 25. But again, remember as a management accountant, you don't look at uh, money implications only. It is your responsibility to also consider the non-financial performance, non-financial variables. You know, like for example, you could easily say, hey, subcontracting is very easy. It is 25, it is very cheap. Go for subcontracting. What if, for example, you consider, you know, there are things you have to consider, like even the financial muscles of this, company? What if we just shut down our production plant of bottles and then these guys are not financially capable? I'll have to look at the quality issues, reliability issues. So all after doing all that, then I'll be able to go ahead and tell people, I mean, don't struggle with this. For example, go for this. It is not only a cheaper option, but also there are these other advantages. So when you do like that over so many activities, then a management accountant will be a wealth creator. Because for every savings you make, ladies and gentlemen, you create wealth. Even for our own kind of uh, engagements that we get outside here to do. If, for example, as I was telling you in the morning when I was teaching you advanced financial reporting, when you go and pump into a club, 40,000 Kenya shillings, that is wasteful. You are simply throwing away your wealth. We need to consider being very cost conscious because when you are cost conscious, we, ladies and gentlemen, create wealth by savings. We create wealth by savings. I'm not saying that I would want my students to be very stingy. No, but whatever we are doing, let's do it in moderation. But most importantly, management accounting is about advising companies. So even in the companies, always look for opportunities to save what year money, to save on expenses as a way of creating what year wealth, as a way of maximizing returns for our entities. Now, please listen. The biggest responsibility of this management accountant, I've been in this management accounting thing for so long, practically. And I know those aspects that management accountants should be doing. And how, how I wish this class had over 100 people. How I wish this class had over 100 people because today we are discussing very good things. And of course, uh, I mean, I would want us, ladies and gentlemen, I know this is not very good of me, but I would want to give you like two minutes break. 
a two minutes break and not a break per se, but uh, in those two minutes, please try talking to your friends here. Before I introduce, because I'm introducing this subtopic very nicely, I would want to get more than 100. I would want to get more than 100 people, in this case, here joining. Is it possible? Yes, it's possible. Somebody mentioned in the morning that it's only impossible if you don't try. So just get to any group that you are in. Tell those guys to join in. Tell those guys to join in. They need to join. They need to join. They need to join. This is something very nice. Just a little break there. All right. So that uh, students can share, like the students who are following me on Facebook, they can easily share this live cast on their various groups, like exactly what I'm doing. You need to know how to promote your teacher. Your teacher does a lot. I sacrifice a lot. I need to build a behemoth of an organization, a big organization called RCM Online College. We are supporting currently about 2,000, but I mean, we have been on that number for so long. Now we need to double. We need to double that number so you can reach out to many people who are really struggling outside here. So please send this to all your colleagues, even at work, tell them there is a course here that you need to hear. Even if you're not doing CPA, this is a very important course today. You learn a lot, trust you me. You learn a lot, trust you me. You learn a lot, trust you me. I can see the number on Facebook Live growing. The number that is now not growing is the number of uh, the Zoomers, the Zoom students. These Zoom students, I'll have to devise a way of punishing them. No, I don't punish my students. They are my good people. I don't punish them, but I know they can do better. I know they can do better. They can just get into this and then they share, they share, they share, they share. They share, they share. I would want to see them sharing. We are overcoming. We are overcoming. Life is good. Life is very good. Life is very good. All right, so the two minutes are over. So let me now continue. Let me continue. <laughs> no, I can't punish my students, really. <laughs> I can't punish them. Great, great. So that is good, ladies and gentlemen. So we are continuing here. You know, managers are supposed to be doing five key things. Managers. Managers are supposed to be doing five key things. These were those functions given to us by Henri Fayol. By Fayol. If you remember Fayol, 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 in this case here, told us that uh, we have what we call the five functions of management, five functions of management. So then these five functions of management, we have P-O-C-C, -C, POC. The first function is planning. The second one is organizing. The third one is uh, controlling. Controlling. The fourth one, of course, is uh, coordination. 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 And then we have what we call communications. Communication. So then as a management accountant, remember you are a manager, automatically there, we have to be good with anything to do with the planning. And the planning for us involves what? It involves coming up with budgets. So you're coming up with budgets. And when you come up with budgets, there are very many techniques you can use. For example, we have what we call bottom-up system. And the bottom-up, of course, will be involving like all departments, eh? Right, you simply go down there, you ask each department to come up with their own 
budgets, you consolidate them, and then you give them to the top management. So top management, of course, they will have a say over them. They can say this one tweak a little bit, change this a little bit, and this one here yeah, adopt like that. So, but it is coming from the employees bottom up. And of course, during that, then there'll be a lot of what year coordinations in departments to avoid what year, to avoid, for example, duplications. So the management accountant, I would want to know, I mean, this department wants, to, there is a lot of coordination to happen there. All right. Then the gentlemen, of course, in this case here, after you come up with your budget, you must be very good in doing what we call controlling. We must be very good in doing what we call controlling. So to control, just like, for example, when we started, even Mwalimuya is so, so poor at this. When we started the year, I made resolutions. Many of them, at least I know I have broken two. I've broken two. The first one was sugar. I'll say that this time round, I'll not try sugars here, especially the live, the sugar we put on tea. All right. I tried like the first two weeks here and there. The third week, I said, hey, let me just do one teaspoon. After I tried once like this, I did a few cutting of corners here and there. Now I'm back fully to the same amount of sugar that I used to do water today. And really, this is not life. I'm so sure there must be somebody who is laughing at me there. But I'm so sure most of us, we have broken our new year resolutions. Why did we get to break our new year resolutions? It's because we are not very good with this concept of what year control. We are not very good with this concept of controlling. Because under controlling, we are supposed to say, fine, this is the budget we have put. We have this strategic plan which says we should be able to move this way. So, of course, as we move this way as an organization, we'll always be making mistakes here and there. We forget a little bit here and there. So, and we get ourselves, in this case, trying to get off plan, off plan like that. So, we move the direct off plan. So, under controlling, we are supposed to have like uh, these extremes. We have, in this case, here the ceiling and the floor. Once in this case here, we empower the ceiling and make it very strong. It means that any time we'd want to get out of here, we'll knock the ceiling and then we get, bounce back and continue. We knock the floor, we bounce back. We keep on walking towards what the right direction. It is this concept of walking towards the right direction that we call controlling. Things must be in control. Our projects must be in control. They must be in control. Now, for us to be in control of our operations, we will be using various tools. For example, we have a tool called variances, where we shall be comparing the original, or rather the budget here, we have the budget here versus the actuals. So should we get the budget and the actuals being very different, what do we do? That is a variation. So we need to investigate those variations. Ladies and gentlemen, for us to be able to be in control of the operations as management accountant, we must be evaluating performance. Performance appraisal is a strategic tool. So you must be looking at these employees. I mean, we give them this target. Here they are, right? So we must be evaluating what we call performance and that is why i am here today to ensure that i crush this topic number five topic number five is the one that i'm doing this topic number five is the one that i'm doing it's called strategic performance measurement if you are here and you happen to be a management accountant at your, at your workplace and you have never measured the performance of your activities of your employees then know there is a problem a manager a management accountant should be able to appraise, should be able to measure performance. And I would want strategically to go to 5.4, non-financial performance measures and these alternative performance measures using the balance scorecard performance pyramid, Vitz, Gerald and Moon building block model. So this is what I'm discussing today. Only this, once I clear them, I should be able to go home. There is something that I haven't told you that I have these books. I have these books. You should not write any notes, not unless you would want to simply keep yourself busy. Of course, it's important to jot a few notes here and there. But I mean, if you're not in a portion of 
writing, don't kill yourself because already we have these notes here. Let me just share with you, which I'll be able to attach. So like this is a very good SCCA book, which talks about these models here. Like this is what we call the balanced scorecard model. The balanced scorecard model, very important model. Very important model. Very important model. Very important model. So don't, don't struggle to make notes. Try to understand. It is understanding that I would want you guys to have. The moment you understand, then the notes already, you will have them. But again, I cannot stop you from making your high-level notes. Now, why most businesses die in Africa? Remember, in Africa, it's very, very few businesses that get to see the light, the light of the day. Very few businesses. Most businesses collapse before they celebrate their third birthday. Before year three, ending of year three, they die. One of the reasons why those companies die, it's because they don't believe in, they don't believe in management accountancy. Most of them do not have management accountants and they don't even outsource their services. If you ask me, management accounting is a, a key pillar. Why? Because management accounting starts with what we call cost accounting. I know of so many businesses that are selling their products at a loss simply because they have never even taken time to compute the costs of their production. They don't have management accountants. If you have a management accountant, then he'll be able to appraise your performance, for example, using some of these models here. The first one that I would want you to have there is the balanced scorecard. I'll be able to tell you why this is very important. So balanced scorecard, if you're drawing it, balanced scorecard looks at the operations, looks at uh, the entity performance of the performance measurement of an entity from four perspectives, from four perspectives. Which perspectives are this? If you understand this, then you will be good in business. These four perspectives are here for this score to be balanced. Number one, we must get it right in terms of financial perspectives. So we have here what we call the financial perspective. We have what we call the customer perspective. Customer perspective. We have, ladies and gentlemen, what we call the business processes perspective. Business processes perspective. And then lastly, we have what we call learning learning and innovation. So you can't talk about balance scorecard if you do not have those perspectives. So the first one is financial perspective, customer perspective, business processes perspective, business processes perspective, business processes perspective. And then we have learning and innovation, what year perspective. Learning and the innovation perspective. So let me know, of course, I know some of you write, are writing. So if you have been able to write, if, if you're writing, have you been able to reach here? If you're writing, I want to give you a secret today. I want to give you a secret today. And I would want us to move in a very methodical way. So the four perspectives of balance scorecard. All right. So then, ladies and gentlemen, please listen. And I would want us to look at big companies like Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola, if today you are the CEO of Coca-Cola, amen, because I know my students normally will reach that kind of what here, eleva elevated positions. If you are the manager of Coke today, trust you me, you must get your numbers right. Your revenues must be growing every other day. Those guys normally put a lot of controls on their numbers. They try their best. It doesn't matter whether there is COVID or not. You'll always realize that their revenues are always doing what you go. 
So in terms of financial perspective, ladies and gentlemen, basically, here we are looking at the profits. Profitability. So under profitability, we must ensure that we are growing our revenues and we are minimizing what here? Our costs. Because for us to get profit, we normally take revenue minus what here? Revenue minus cost. And this question is very popular in your past papers, advanced management accounting past papers. Very popular. Profit is revenue minus cost. So always ensure that your marketing strategies are right to ensure that your revenues are always doing what you're growing. And as they grow, you must always be putting brakes on the costs. Look at the big companies like Safaricom today. If you look at Safaricom, these guys are still retrenching their workers. Even Cox. Even EABL, the other day they outsourced their finance uh, department uh, function to some company in Pakistan, and they had to lay off so many accountants, right? So you can see these guys are really generating revenues, but they're always thinking about, hey, how do we cut our costs, especially through automation and robotics? Because at the end of it all, it's about growing your profits. If you're not growing your profits, then your longevity will not be there. You're not going to live long enough. Because it is profits that will be able to fi finance all these other activities in a company. Profits. So as much as you're talking of, please look at this other ratio, ETC, under the financial perspective, hey, as I send you out there to these employers and ensure that your employers are increasing their what here, their pro, their profits. That is what financial perspective is all about. You can talk about the other perspectives like liquidity or other, other elements of uh, this, like, but the mother of all is that we must grow our profits muscle. We must grow our profits muscle because without growing profits muscle, it means that our financing strategy, our financial uh, capital structure, we really be dependent on debt. We must grow our own revenues here. We must grow or rather our own profits to create equity, equity to increase like that. From there, ladies and gentlemen, if I'm the CEO of Coca-Cola, if I would want to support this, now I have to think about these other three perspectives. These other three perspectives are non-monetary. They are non-monetary. You can't attach some money to them per se, but they are the most important. The moment you get it right on these three, then automatically you'll be able to spur your profits. The first one is what we are calling the customer perspective, the first one and non-monetary is what we call the customer perspective. And the customer perspective, you as the CEO, please the customer perspective, you cannot delegate to this. Customer perspective, you have to be on top of it because it is the customers who are driving the business. So on the customer perspective, ladies and gentlemen, you must ensure that you get four things correctly. We have what we call customer acquisition. Customer acquisition. We have what we call customer satisfaction. Customer satisfaction. Customer satisfaction. We have, ladies and gentlemen, what we call loyalty. Customer loyalty. Customer loyalty. And then lastly, we have what we call the awareness. You must make your customers aware of any new developments. They are an important stakeholder. They are an important stakeholder. Let me know once you guys are able to write up to here. Let me know. Once you guys are able to write up to here, those four things, customer acquisition, that you are acquiring customers often, new customers often, that your customers that you have at the moment are satisfied. We have customer satisfaction. Then we have customer loyalty, that anytime a customer thinks about this particular kind of a product, so long as you have it, they'll always think about your shop first. That your customers need to be loyal. Your customers need to be loyal. Your customers need to be loyal. So have you been able to write up to there? Have you been able to write up to here? Have you been able to write up to here? Have you been able to write up to here? Have you been able to write up to here? You guys are not speaking fast enough. Because I want us to do things today. 
I want us to do things today. So then we have here what we call awareness. We have what we call awareness. Awareness is all about publicity. Publicity. You must be able to publicize your company and the products in a big way. You must be able to adapt new ways, which of course are social media ways of reaching out to your existing clientele and of course the potential clients. You must be big and intentional in terms of how you market your company, in terms of how you market your products. This thing of saying that uh, if it's uh, high quality products, that they'll be able to sell themselves, that is an old adage, which automatically will sink you on sand during broad daylight as a company will go under. <clears throat> so it doesn't matter how big you are. It doesn't matter your size, how small you are. That is irrelevant. What matters is that uh, you must always be good at publicizing your craft. What is it that you're doing? So every day I expect, for example, if you're an accountant, I expect you to come and tell people every day that, you know what, I'm doing bookkeeping. I'm doing this under this. I'm doing uh, tax computations for clients in Facebook on Instagram, on TikTok, it is because it is a requirement as per the balance score model. Hii kusema tichama charge user, kibaya charge itembeza squeezy, hata kama ni kizuri aje, lazima utoke watu waeze kukuona. Hato kutumii concept ya just marriage. We sema, I'm so good at, uh, no, no. You must get outside there for people to see the kind of person that, I mean, Ladies and gentlemen, the truth is that you must really be public. You must be public. You must get outside there. You must network. You must network. So the same is applicable for companies. And if you look at these big companies that uh, are able to make profits regardless of the economic situation, those guys are big in publicizing themselves. If EABL is a company that I can speak about, EABL in terms of marketing, I mean, they could be number two or number three or even number one, because number one, they do a lot of branding, all right? If you go to social media today, you'll get like their major brands, they're even boosted, they're boosting, all right? And the most important thing is that they understand the clientele they're looking for. They know that they're not looking for people who are over 45 years like me. No, they're looking for young people. People, in this case here, presumably, who could even be in high school. But of course, they can't bring it out like, I mean, those are their potential uh, 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 niche. So in this case here for them, what happens, look at, look at, for example, all their marketing taglines. They don't target big people. They target very young people. That is where they come up with taglines like, eh, if you would want to roar like a lion, drink, listen up. At my age, I know there is nothing in this world that I can drink and roar like a lion. But a young person who is, uh, for example, a soprano, kind of speaking of a boy, chances are they may want to test that roar of a lion. So chances are they may try. That if you want micro power, if you want micro power, drink Guinness. Look at all that publicity creating uh, for themselves and attracting, in this case, the young ones. And for your information, I'm not marketing them. I'm just giving you practical examples, practical examples for you to be able to relate because I want you to be very strong in the marketing function in your companies. If you're a management accountant and you're not good in terms of supporting marketing, then the company that you're heading as a management accountant will go to hell, will go to hell, will go to hell. All right? So publicity is very, very key. All right, and, and make the, the, the taglines, the taglines must be very, very special, must be very, very special. The taglines must be very, very big and ensure that every time any person hears about your tagline, for example, if it's Safaricom, Twinwane, Twinwane. So ensure that those taglines are very, very big. So if it is a RCM online college, we normally tell people that uh, uh, online classes work what your magic. They work magic. They work magic like that. 
those taglines are very important. Now, under customer acquisition, please ensure that I give your marketers great targets, big targets, big targets. Tell them, for example, if you have got uh, a sales pipeline, out of this sales pipeline, keep on calling, keep on calling. And out of this, tell them that we want you guys to be converting like 50%. Give them a conversion ratio, which is very high. But again, ensure that you pay them handsomely to incentivize them, to motivate them to work even more. And then, of course, customer satisfaction, like now, you guys, most of you, of course, are our students at RSCM. We must ensure that you get more than you paid for. Value for money, exceeding what you paid for. All right? So that now in the future, the moment, of course, we ensure that you pass, especially if you're passing one, one touch, and then you go out there and you're blessed with a, a young boy, a young girl. Next time when they say they want to do CPA, what do you do? You think about RSCM. You think about Joshua Aura. That's loyalty. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, if you allow Molimu to move on, we are now in the business processes here. If you would want really to bolt up the financial perspective and ensure that your business processes are automatic, automate your systems. You should not be that kind of a company that receives what your cash, 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 cash. No, we have to automate our systems, automate systems, automate systems. And of course, as we talk of uh, automated systems, also the management adopt, adopt modern management styles, adopt modern management styles. All right. So modern management styles, like which ones? Like, for example, what we call umboa, umboa, umboa. Umboa is management by walking around. You can't tell me that you are a good manager whose role is to sit whose role is to sit in some fancy office with a fancy leather uh, uh, round uh, sofa set, swinging just around, throwing uh, words here and there, you do this for me, you do this, and then tell me, that, no, no, no. A good manager should be able to walk around. Go in this case here at your employees' workstations. At times even work with them in some days. Get to experience their fast experiences as they work for the company, right? Management by walking around. Ladies and gentlemen, we have the last one, which is learning. This has to be a learning organization. Continuous learning for that matter. That is the only way that we'll be able to do what you to post huge profits here if your employees are learning every now and then, right? If, for example, after a project is over, a good company should always have a situation where they document the skills learned, where we sit down and reflect. If you would want to see those guys here who are doing very well, who are, who are, who are in very good companies, they'll tell you after some time, they always sit down like, when, for example, they are doing some project and then they talk of reflection. What skills were learned? Where do we get it correctly? Where do we get it wrong? What should we do best in the next what year pro? project because learning is mandatory you should be able to take in this case here people to what here too even the classes like at rcm pay for your employees because the moment your employees are learned ladies and gentlemen very well then they shall be able to do at their best they shall be able to operate at their optimal levels and of course when they operate at the optimal levels what happens productivity goes up and when productivity goes up profitability goes up as well and then, ladies and gentlemen, we have what we call innovation. Innovation is all about coming up with new ways of doing things. Coming up with that, for example, if you have products, always ensure that every other day you are bringing like two new products here, like yearly. On a yearly basis, give us new products. On a yearly basis, give us new products. On a yearly basis, give us new products. You can't tell me that you are working for a company that believes in specialization. At RCM, I'll not believe in special, that would want to become the best in CPA forever. No, that will not happen. Some young men will come from somewhere and they'll be able to beat this Mualimu here with time. So the only thing that can only work for me as I work on a succession plan is to ensure that I diversify into many courses. For example, now we have introduced public speaking classes. I mean, we'd want to run out of this circuit of what here, Kasneb as well. 
we must be innovative. So innovation is all about coming up with new products, new ways of doing things. Look at, for example, this company called Coke. Is there somebody who can tell us the types of Fanta that they know? Please try listing them. The types of Fanta soda that they know. These guys are ever coming up with what here? Yeah, new types of Fantas, new types of Coca-Cola, like Zero Coke. All right? Because that is how you widen your net, your safety net, your net for generating of cash flows. When you generate, in this case, your revenues from various what your types of what here, so like Fanta Pineapple, Fanta Passion. I mean, they have got various, many types of Fantas, and uh, you may not be able to know all of them. If you ask your own children who are, for example, in grade five, grade whatever, these guys will tell you other types of Fantas that you've never heard about. Because Fanta is really, Coca I mean, as a company, is out there to produce what you look at, for example, breweries. In 2009, I worked for a company that was uh, doing for them what we call agnomics. Agnomics, agnomics, ladies and gentlemen, is a study, is a study, agnomics. It's basically a study of how a company's products can be made to fit needs of some disadvantaged groups. If for example, as the RCM Online College, we came up with a very kind of a special course that people who are blind can study and they understand. And then they start, in this case, say, applying that knowledge. Then the society will say, hey, you know what? In terms of agonometry, RCM, top notch, will have touched the soft part of the country's what year? Hearts we can easily get many, many clients. So in this case here, agnomics for breweries, they wanted to know why the disadvantaged group here was women, why women were not drinking a lot of their beverages. We call them beverages. So we did just a simple survey and we would go to all these big and small hotels. Whenever we get got a lady drinking whatever they were drinking, we used to give them some kind of a questionnaire. Why are you not drinking this and this? And some of them were, we, we, we wanted to drink Tasca, but the last time I tried that Tasca, the taste uh -uh, was so bad. They were so bitter. That's why since 2012, around there, they started making very sweet kind of water beers. I've never tried a beer myself, and I'm not marketing them, but I'm now telling you out of experience, out of work, the work that I've done. All right. Is there anybody who knows some of those sweet, sweet, some of those sweet, sweet, some of those sweet, sweet beers. And remember, they were being made, targeted uh, to who? To women. But again, when we went back to do some kind of a survey, when we were exiting an exit kind of survey, we discovered that those sweet beers were being drunk more by men than women. So then we discovered that there were, must have been men who were uh, suffering, who were suffering silently, quietly. All right. All right. All right. So in terms of uh, learning and innovation perspectives and gentlemen, take your employees to class, innovation, produce two or more products, new products every year if possible. Look at a company like Safaricom. I don't talk politics, but please allow me to talk politics a little bit. You know, like him, hate him, Relo Odinga is a force in this country. In 2017, he came and told the people, resist these companies. Brookside was among us, those companies that were greatly affected. Their revenues went down by over 50%. Brookside. Safaricom was among us, those companies that are a negative advisory was issued against. On the same, same year, with the Raila's voice, Safaricom's revenues went up against very many people's expectations. Why do you think that was the case? It's because Safaricom is innovative. It's because of what here M-Pesa products offered by, for example, by uh, uh, Safaricom. 
So somebody would, in this case, switch off their phone because they've been told by Ryla, switch off your phone. But in one hour, they go back and they realize that somebody has sent them. So in, at the end of the day, Safaricom was still getting what year. But they could only do that because of what year innovation. And that is why I feel sad today that uh, in this case, Safaricom, a behemoth of a company, a big company right now, it's almost getting down on its knees. Their share price that day was just 14 shillings from highs of 40. What is not happening there? With all this innovation, I mean, Safaricom is, an, is a global icon. It's renowned all over. All right? All right? So, ladies and gentlemen, then we must be what here? We must be innovative. So, up to here, of course, I'll be giving you notes. But are we together, really? Are we together? Are we together? I'm not feeling uh, uh, whether we guys are really connecting. Are we really connecting? Are we really connecting? Are we really connecting? Okay, these guys are following. These guys are following. Now, from there, ladies and gentlemen, if you allow Mwalimu, I'll be able to move straight away to what we call this Gerald and the Moon building blocks. This Gerald, this Gerald and the Moon building blocks. This Gerald and the Moon building blocks. Remember, I showed you from your course outline. Let me go back to your course outline a little bit. So, from your course outline, this is what I'm doing. I don't teach things that are outside the course out, outline. This is what I'm doing here. That is the CPS syllabus. So now I've been able to teach you guys what you call the balance scorecard. Now I would want to go to this. This is quite easy. This Gerald and the Moon building block model. And then I'll be able to finish with uh, the performance pyramid. All right. So now I'm looking at the Vitz Gerald. That name is exciting. The name alone will be able to make me, the name alone, will, uh, I mean, it's exciting, will be able to make me remember so many things. Great things, really. Great things, really, here. Yeah. Find. So now I'm looking for this, Gerald. This is so exciting, I'm telling you. The person who thought of introducing back AMA, that person must be a genius. That person, we need to find him wherever he is and bow down for him. He's like a guru, guru, guru. So we have here, we call it the building block model. The building block model. The building block model. Building block model. So Vitz, Gerald, and Moon developed an approach to improving the performance of measurement system in service organizations. It suggests that the performance measurement system should be based on three building blocks of dimensions, standards, and what here words. So you can see like how for those of you who are building some house, it will be a block house, etc. So you've got our three blocks there, three blocks there. So the first one is standards. The second block is called rewards. The third block is called dimension. It's called dimension. Allow me to draw this for the interest. In the interest of everybody, allow me to draw this, and then I get to explain it even better, even better. Vitz, Gerald, and who? Moon. Guys who wanted businesses to go as high as the moon is. If you want to go up there, then you must always think about how you build your company. It's called what here? 
building blocks model. So under building blocks model, we have our two blocks down here. We have our two blocks down here. The first block is known as the standards block. The second is known as the rewards block. And then now we have in this case here, this other one here, known as what here somebody, known as dimension, known as dimension like that. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please listen and listen to me very well. This guy really came from two fronts here. Actually, he was relating uh, employees. He was relating employees to the performance of the whole company. And he said, these employees, as you start the year, set standards with them. Set standards with them. Give them targets. Give them targets. So that's the first block, standards. Let this be known by everybody. Let them be known by everybody. Let the employees own up those standards. Use what we call bottom up. Bottom up model of coming up with these targets. From there, should they meet their standards, ensure that you are rewarding them. Should they meet their standards? Don't, in this case here, try to play some picky ponky game. Cat and mouse games. The manager is always running. Should they be able to meet their targets and you had made their promise to them, then ensure straight away that you're doing what here, ensure straight away that you are, ensure straight away that you are doing what here, ensure straight away that you are rewarding them. Ensure that you are rewarding them here. Yeah. Ensure that you are rewarding them. Ensure that you are rewarding them. Because I... Okay, sorry, just a minute. All right. So in this case, ladies and gentlemen, what are we saying here that we must set standards? And once you set standards in your company, and this is where very many of us go wrong, we've set targets. We've said we are nation media. And as nation media, we expect uh, you guys to be selling like 50 uh, uh, newspapers on a daily basis. So then when they sell these 50 newspapers and you had set some reward, you will set some reward that upon hitting this 50 target, we shall give you this amount. Please honor the reward. Frederick, I don't think that is a very hard point, really. I don't, I don't think that is a rocket science. Uh -huh. That you have set the targets and then ensure that you do what you want to hit those targets, you honor. That's what happens, uh, Frederick, in all these businesses. Yep. So in this case here, the rewards are there. And then once in this case here, we have the standards and the rewards have been met, everything will fall in place in the company. All dimensions will come home, back home to roost. Dimensions. Now, dimensions are for the business. These two are for the employees. Dimensions are for the business. So dimensions, when you talk of dimensions, ladies and gentlemen, what are we looking at? When we talk of dimensions, what are we looking at? When we talk of dimensions, for example, once you have been able to pay these guys whatever you had agreed, and everybody is happy, the first dimension is competitiveness. Your company will be very competitive. Competitiveness. Your company will be very competitive. Competitiveness. Your company will be very competitive. I mean, you'll be able to hit what we call a blue, a blue ocean strategy. A blue ocean strategy. You'll be beyond this red, bloody red, competitive competition. Blood red, where competition is so intense, you are holding each other on the troth, uh, throats here. No, this one here will be great. Because now you have uh, incentivized your workers here, you will become what you will become very competitive. So competitiveness. And then we have, of course, you will be able to improve on financial performance. Your financial performance automatically will go up. Financial performance automatically will go up because your workers are happy. And then, of course, we have here quality of service. 
we have quality of service. Quality of service will go up. These guys are happy. After quality of service, what do we have? We have flexibility, 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 flexibility. Then we have, ladies and gentlemen, here resource, resource. We have resource utilization, resource utilization, resource utilization, resource utilization. Resource utilization is another dimension. And then the last dimension is innovation. The last dimension is innovation. Please write those things first of all. Write them down. Once you finish, allow me to know that you have finished. So once your employees are happy, you've set standards, they've met the standards. Once they are met the standards, reward them, they're happy, then all these dimensions will fall in place. You shall be competitive. Your financial performance can't be compared with any of your competitors. You will be more flexible than any of your competitors here. Your quality will be perfect. Flexibility will be there. Your employees will not misuse the resources and they'll be what here? They'll be innovative. They'll be innovative. So once you clear, Writing these things, could you kindly put your thumbs up like this? At least Ngara is done. Ngara is done. Ngara is done. Ngara is done. This has been asked in your past papers. In your past papers, this has been asked. In your past papers, this has been asked. It's called Fitzgerald, Fitzgerald and the moon building blocks. Fitzgerald and the moon building blocks. This Gerald and the moon. Don't do business as if you do not understand some of these models. These are great models here. Great. All of them, I think, right now, they're done. And then, of course, I have some followers who are on Facebook. Are they also writing things, really? Let me just check. Are they writing things? Are they writing things? Are they writing things, these guys? Let me check. Let me just check here. Done, great, great. Great, great, great. Thank you so much, thank you so much. Great, great. Now, ladies and gentlemen, please listen. I would want to explain here that these people here, you've rewarded them. They're happy. They are looking even for more rewards. Then they will be able to ensure that the company's dimension, which is normally the biggest brick, keeps on swelling. Your company will be very competitive. Your profitability financial performance will be up there. These guys here will not be joking with quality. They'll be very flexible. Do you know the meaning of flexibility? You Do you know the meaning of flexibility? These are very important. You know, flexibility is what we call agility, agile, being agile. Agility, responsiveness. Resp Do you know that there are very many employees outside there who are very irresponsive? They don't respond. They don't care. Assuming this is a young lady who would want to get married. Say this lady wants to get married in April. You know, this lady is normally they'll buy like their wedding gowns very early. Mapema kabisa. And shockingly, these ladies, those wedding gowns, they keep on fitting them like every day. And every time they fit into it, they feel like they have added weight. So every time they are on the dieting. All right. So this lady, ladies and gentlemen, one day she's put on this wedding gown, elegant wedding gown, She's walking in this case here in her house, trying to look at how things are looking like on the mirrors. Things are great, great, great. From nowhere, a young kid that they are staying with rushes her way with wheat porridge. And they pour the entire cup of porridge on that gown. 
And of course, as if they have done something very good, as usual, those kids and they are very innocent, they laugh because now they are able to see Madoa Doa, where there was none, where there was everything being white. Now we have Madoa Doa. And now this great lady comes to you, comes to you, comes to you, Dobby, laundry shop. So this lady is with you there in the laundry shop. So she comes and tells workers, oh, this is what happened. I have my wedding coming up in three days. Three days. So today is Thursday. And by Sunday, I'll be walking down the aisle. Hmm. If your employees are not motivated, most of them will tell this poor lady that you know what? We have, we'll tell this poor lady that you know what we have, we'll tell this poor lady here that we have, we have a policy, a policy where this kind of service takes seven days. The employees will not be responsive. They'll not be agile. They'll not be flexible. They'll not be flexible. They'll not be flexible. Why are they not flexible? It's because I many of have not given these people, for example, this aspect of targets, asking them that, you know what, in this kind of environment, we can't expect to be very rigid. In this kind of environment, we must be flexible enough. What you need to do is to tell this lady who is going to wear the that fine, we have got this seven days policy. But because of you and your special day, we are going to flex something. And then ensure that we work day and night to just ensure, ladies and gentlemen, that you get this gown on the right at the right time. On Saturday, for example, very early in the morning for even you to continue fitting on it and everything will be well. All right. But of course, there should be some downside of it. As we work so hard to bend our policy, when we are charging our normal customers 2000 we shall charge you 20000 we shall charge you 20,000. What do you think of this lady who is going to wed? Do you think she will accept this deal or will she, will she reject this deal? What do you think? Will she accept the deal or she will reject the deal? What do you think? What do you think? She'll accept like yesterday, like that statement. Because I mean, what options does she have? So at the end of the day, because you have incentivized your workers here, because they know that there's a commission coming or something, you can see now the dimension here, financial performance. Do you think that lady, after she gets that kind of help, do you think in the future she will ever, ever think about any other uh, 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 doby shop, any other laundry shop, when she wants to do any other kind of washing in the future? No. So again, we shall be competitive. We shall be competitive. Ladies and gentlemen, there is nothing like having as bad as having a demotivated workforce. When you have a demotivated workforce, like I've seen this thing in hotels, you have a demotivated workforce. These guys here, in terms of utilizing resources, when is a kula nyama yote, kuoteli, customers wako, wakose. All right. So in this case here, it's important that uh, your workers should be motivated. They must be incentivized. When they're incentivized, then all these dimensions, they'll even be very innovative, these guys. They will be very, very innovative. They'll be very, very innovative. So is this clear? Is this clear? Is this clear? Very loyal to the farm. Very loyal to the farm. So is this clear? Will you be able to remember these factors and a dimension? Great. You are have to cram them because when they ask you have to cram them very clear however there are small things you must always remember here under standards standards they must be owned by the employees they must be achievable standards unaambia watu wafanye impossible things possible and you're putting it down as a ati ati mfikisho na funzi mfikisho na funzi 4000 
unafanya mira kwa gani so in this case here achievability is very very important and then of course the standards must be fair allow me to explain this so under standards we've said the three things that you must always remember under these standards we have three things number one under standards we've got three things under standards we've got three things so number one we have ownership when you're setting these targets discuss with the employees for the employees to own them up and these standards in this case here must be achievable we only say that standards are achievable if an employee who is just above average is able to hit them up. An employee is above average should be able to. But if you realize that you're only setting standards, that it's only one, two, three people only reaching, then there is no balance there. There's no balance there. Standards, of course, they have to be tough, but they must be achievable, achievable achievable and then lastly ladies and gentlemen these standards must always be fair must always be fair must always be fair remember fairness don't set standards and ensure that uh, for example these employees are working for you for 16 hours they're human beings with families they must be fair fairness can also be looked from the sense of gender if, for example, you are a brick-making company, a brick-making company, so this brick-making company, as you get some boys here who are hitting 60 bricks, 60 bricks in a day, 60 bricks in a day, would you also expect female uh, employees to make 60 bricks in a day? Would you expect female employees to make 60 bricks in a day as well? Or are you among that class that says that whatever a man can do, a woman can do? So do we give women 70 bricks target? We give them 70 bricks as their target. <laughs> so fairness could also be looked at regionally. All right. So assuming that you have got uh, Norfolk Hotel, Norfolk Hotel in Nairobi, and Norfolk Hotel in Mandera, will you give Norfolk Hotel a target of getting 100 customers? And Norfolk Hotel Mandera, a same target of getting 100 customers. Not possible. Not possible. Not possible. So we must be able to look at uh, the existing prevailing conditions on the ground. So if you are at Lokcha, Turukana area, Lodua, I mean, those are great towns, but for sure you don't expect like business there to be the same as business in Nairobi. So in this case here, fairness. Is very very important. It's very very important, ladies and gentlemen. This you have to remember those three items. Those three items you must remember them. And then we have here. And then we have here rewards. Rewards must be clear. They must be able to incentivize workers, and they must be controllable. Rewards. Those are the three factors under rewards and the rewards so rewards we are looking at uh, clarity 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 in this case here motivation motivation and the aspect of what here controllability allow me to explain so for example the people who are teaching at a university you know at the end of the day if you mark student scripts You'll be paid like a hundred Kenya shillings per script. A hundred Kenya shillings per script. So it has to be very clear. Any reward system must be very clear from the onset. Employees should be able to know that once we hit this 60 bricks target, we shall be able to get like this number of, uh, I mean, even bricks for our own building. So the reward system must be very clear. This reward system must be able to motivate. One of the things that made this Mualimu to run away from university teaching, I taught at Kabarak for so long, I taught at Jaquat, I taught at Desta, why I will never ever go back to university teaching is because of those marking of those scripts. So like Jaquat, I remember I used to go there and then I used to come home with say 300 scripts of what year, scripts to mark. How do you mark all those scripts? All right. Perhaps you give me like say a thousand shillings per script. But if you're giving me like a hundred, does this really motivate? No, it doesn't motivate me. And that is why you will get so many university teachers going and giving in this case here, they are very young children, maybe from two, from three, 
guys to mark degree papers. So ticks are being just thrown anyhow. And then you have people who are outside here walking all round with what here, their shoulders are high saying that we got first class honors and your papers were big. So in this case, ladies and gentlemen, a reward system must be motivating, must be motivating. And again, remember, it has to be employees who are able to do, it must be on things that employees are able to control. If something out of uh, their control happens and they are not able to meet the target for things that are uncontrollable, then automatically you should go ahead as a company and reward them. Let me give you an example. Like on the 26th of every December, you can't get any newspaper selling outside there. 26th of December, globally actually, be it Washington newspaper, globally, 26th, all those papers, newspapers take a break. So if, for example, you have told, in this case here, yeah, this salesman of yours at National uh, Media to sell newspapers, and you're giving them a retainer of, say, a thousand shillings every day, then on the 26th, go ahead and pay them, even if they sell zero. Why? Because they are not able to sell because of reasons which are being put on them by the company. By reasons which are being imposed on them by the company. So in this case here, the reward system can only be computed on the context of controllability. Controllability. If anything out of control crops up, like for example, we have an earthquake and these guys are not able to sell because they've been thrown here and there because of scampering, then automatically, please, if you're a good company, you should be able to go ahead and reward them. You should be able to go ahead and reward them. Ladies and gentlemen, as I come to the end of this particular session because I have another class, I would want to hear from you. If you were to break here today, what will you be able to say you've learned about Beats, Gerald, and the Moon? Building blocks. Of course, I know there are three blocks. I know there are three building blocks. But in terms of those blocks, do you know their content, really? Do you know their content? 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 Abracadabra, Vits, Gerald, Moon, building blocks. Mm -hmm. Integrated to help achieve the organizational goal. And Gera, you are a very good student. Yes, the three blocks are interrelated. To enable the company achieve uh, its main goal, which is profit maximization. I love that. I love that. This Gerald and Moon. This Gerald and Moon building blocks. This Gerald and Moon building blocks. This Gerald and the moon building blocks. All right, all right, all right, all right, all right. Abracadabra. I'm waiting to hear what the other students have to say about this famous Vitz Gerald. It's a bottom up system, bottom up, especially when you are setting the standards, because you must have these employees owning these standards. So it is employees who should be able to give you suge suggestions. They're also you're calling it bottom-up model. Employees should be able to give you su suggestions. All right, so I'm waiting to hear from you guys. So and of course, the students who would want to join RCM College, please don't hesitate to do so. We charge Kenya shillings 4,800 per paper, and our number is 0793. Our number is 0793 555 000. 0793-555-000. Please call us like today. Call us like today and we shall be able to help you. Standards, ownership, achievable, and fairness. Two rewards, clarity, motivational, 
controllable. Thank you so much. I'm getting very good insights here. These are good class. These are good class. So remember moving forward, you will now be able to see me also many times in this class. I'll be teaching with my able colleague called Clinton Omondi. Clinton Omondi. Clinton Omondi. And basically I'll take this topic and variances. I only to do two topics, but those are the topics in this case that are the core of the paper. Once you understand those two, then you'll we'll never go wrong. Omondi can handle them, but again, there's no wrong in you guys getting my blessings given the number of years I've been in the industry. Otherwise, from me to you, it's bye-bye. Thanks, Frederick Wekesa. RCM is a great blessing. Thank you so much. We shall overcome. I've been having classes back to back and still I have the AFM one coming. I would want to end it there. It has been a pleasure indeed hosting you. Being a host is not an easy thing. When a class comes to an end like this, we feel like how a captain gets off a big plane. All right. Once in this case, yeah, this thing touches down and they, I mean, they feel nice. That's the feeling that I have now. Thank you very much. See you next time. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.